Close your eyes and bring all your attention to the breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And try to stay here as consistently as you can. In this way, exercising the mind is different from exercising the body. With exercising the body, you've got to move it through all kinds of different moves. But exercising the mind, you just bring it to one place and try to make it stay there. And the exercise gets done in the area of mindfulness, alertness, remember to, remembering to stay with the breath and being alert to what's actually happening. Then having to exercise your conviction that this is going to be a useful activity. After all, where do your actions come from? They come from the mind. And the actions are what shape your, your life, and so you want to make sure your mind is in good shape, too. When they talk about conviction, they phrase it in terms of conviction in the Buddha's awakening. What did the Buddha discover on his awakening? He discovered the power of action that our lives are determined by our actions. You can't blame some force outside. And that we have the ability to improve our actions as well. And so let's take advantage of that ability. In the beginning, it may take some time to get the mind to settle down, to get it to stay here, to get a sense of well-being, being right here. But where else are you going to look for help in straightening out your mind? You can ask other people's advice, but the actual straightening out is something you have to do. And it requires qualities like this, like mindfulness, alertness, conviction. So you try to develop them inside. The mind wanders off, bring it back and give it a little lecture. Saying, remember why you were wanted to stay here to begin with, why are you wandering off? That way the mind gets more and more convinced that this is really what it wants to do. Nobody's forcing you to do this, but you see that if you don't do this, there's going to be suffering. There's going to be aging, illness, and death anyhow, but the question is, do you need to suffer from those things? And the Buddha says, no, if you train your mind, you don't have to suffer from them. He also tells us that death is not the end, that death, as long as there's craving, there's going to be a rebirth after this, and it's going to be determined by your actions. So it's another aspect of conviction, that you've got to get your mind together. And if you don't get it together now, well, you've got, you'll have another chance, but you don't know when that other chance is going to come, because the cravings of the mind can go in all directions. If the mind isn't trained, you have, you'll have no control over where it's going to go. So give yourself these reasons for staying right here, having a sense of conviction that this is an important skill to master. As I've noticed with anyone who really masters a skill, you have to have, on the one hand, a sense of the real benefits that come from the skill and a sense of the dangers that come if you're not really good at the skill. You have to be very alive to both. Convinced so that the dangers can be avoided through the skill. And so in this way, the conviction is one of your strengths as you practice. It gives, helps give rise to all the other strengths that the mind needs, but this is the beginning one. So if the practice is getting weak, do what you can to firm up your conviction. And a good way of doing that is just noticing your mind. If the mind is out of control, what is it like? If the mind is more under control, what is it like? You begin to see there is a real difference there. But it's not take, asking you to take everything totally on faith. After all, conviction is something that gets verified as you practice. And so as you begin to see the difference in your mind as the mind begins to settle down, okay, that's because you actually did something. So stick with it, because here's your chance. <laughs>